Hi everyone and welcome back to Remo Reads! So today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite series of all times, The Stormlight Archive. In November the fourth book of The Stormlight Archive is coming out. It's called Rhythm of War and we've been doing these uh, weekly pre-releases of chapters and I've been reading them and I just want to gush about them on the internet so I figured I could do a quick like intro on what the Stormlight Archive is for those of you who don't know and then occasionally just like post uh, videos about my thoughts on Rhythm of War. The Stormlight Archive is one of my favorite series of all times and it's by Brandon Sanderson who's one of my favorite authors of all time um, and there are three books out in this series. There's The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. Um, and the fourth book, like I mentioned, is coming out in November and it's called Rhythm of War. So I have received Way of Kings five, maybe six years ago as a Christmas present from one of my cousins. Thanks, cuz. Um, and before that, I never really read epic fantasy and this is definitely an epic fantasy novel. Most exclusively read YA fantasy because I feel like, and this is still true today, YA fantasy tends to have better female representation and people of color representation uh, than epic fantasy, which is a genre still dominated by white men. And I know it's getting better. There are definitely some really great POC authors out there and women authors out there uh, delving into the epic fantasy genre. That was one of my barriers on why I never really read it before starting The Way of Kings. Now The Way of Kings is written by Brando Sando, who is a white man, but none of your faves are white in this book. It's great. <laughs> I did want to explain that because when I first picked up The Way of Kings, it took me four months to read. The book is like 1300 pages long, so it's just a long book. Um, and I just wasn't used to the epic fantasy style because I never really read it before. Uh, so it took me a while to get into, but you know, now it's one of my favorite series. So don't let the size intimidate you. If you are or were like me and never really read epic fantasy before, I would suggest actually starting with one of Brandon Sanderson's other novels like Warbreaker. Um, or the Mistborn trilogy as they're much more consumable because they're significantly shorter so things happen much faster in there and uh, then you'll trust his writing skills and know he writes amazing stories and will be better prepared for Way of Kings. <laughs> okay, so to give a quick summary on what the Stormlight Archive is about. Warning before I start I'm going to pronounce like probably all of the names wrong I like pronouncing things however I want in my head and then when authors come out and they're like this is the actual pronunciation I rebel against it so all of these pronunciations are probably wrong but I like them so we're gonna go with it. <laughs> so it's really hard to explain exactly what the Stormlight Archive is about because there's just so 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 much going on um, but it does take place in a uh, fantasy world completely different than our world and the thing that's really amazing about the world building in the Stormlight Archive is it's not based off of your generic like medieval Europe fantasy land. Uh, it's very unique and different. The continent is called Roshar and um, just everything about this place is so alien compared to our world. They have these massive massive high storms that cross the country uh, every you know week or so. So these storms uh, which are like severe severe hurricanes um, impact their way of life so much. And with those storms they have these things called storm light which is both the currency and the magical system. So it's really really cool. So the people there have adapted to living under these high storms. The main story takes place in the country of Elithkar, um, 
but there's also a whole bunch of other countries in this world and you slowly learn about them bits and pieces and Brandon Sanderson really made each country in this world so unique with their customs and cultures that you really feel like you're in a whole new world. Um, those, that comes in in the later books. The first book mostly focuses on Ellis Carr and our three main heroes. Um, there are a lot, a lot of characters in this book, but I'm going to talk about the three main ones that the first three book, books focus on the most. The first one is Kaladin Stormblood, the love of my life. Ugh, I, he's one of my favorite characters of all time. So when we first meet Kaladin, he is the son of a surgeon who is now turned into a slave, um, or I guess sold into slavery. Yeah, the first book especially is his journey um, because he starts out as a man who really wants to help people and protect people. Um, and then after he gets sold into slavery, he becomes very you know, disillusioned with the world. Um, they have a caste system in this world where light-eyed folks are on the top, so the light eyes, and then the dark-eyed folks are on the bottom, so he, you know, hates this caste system. He hates the light eyes for what they've done to him, um, and he suffers greatly, greatly from depression throughout all of the novels. The journey in his, in the first book is him sort of taking in all the hardships that he's had to endure throughout his life and his character growth and it's just amazing and all I want in my life is happiness for Khaled and Thornblast because my boy deserves it. I love him so much. The other main character is Shalin Devar and she starts out uh, from her point of view as trying to become a ward of Joshna Colin who is the sister of the queen. So she wants to become a scholar, but she has an underlying motive on why she wants to become Joshna's, Joshna's ward. He starts out as a very timid character and really grows into her own throughout this series. And I also really love her and just want her to be happy. This is a theme throughout the books. I love all the characters and just want them to be happy. Um, and. The third main character is Dalinir Colin, who is the uncle to the king, um, and he is trying to keep the kingdom from falling apart while also dealing with his own, um, essentially he's getting these visions and he's not sure if he's going crazy or if something else is going on. So he's trying to, you know, keep the country together while also like falling apart inside. Uh, it's very, very good. Um, so I highly recommend reading the Stormlight Archive. Like I mentioned, Rhythm of War is coming out in November, so now would be the perfect time to start it because you will get the fourth book uh, right when it comes out. Also, if you're really into like Easter eggs and things like that, all of Brandon Sanderson's fantasy novels take place in the same universe called the Cosmere. Um, so the books I mentioned earlier, Warbreaker and Mistborn, um, as well as the Stormlight Archive and a whole bunch of his other, you know, short stories and things like that take place in the same universe. So if you're one of those people who love to find, you know, like Easter eggs and connections between all of the books, this is the series for you because there's so much of that and it's super cool. That's my summary of the Stormlight Archive. Like I mentioned, my favorite, one of my favorite book series and I promise you, you'll love the characters so much. They're all so fully fleshed out and you really just want the best for them. But the plot is amazing. It blows my mind how awesome it is but I can't go into it without so many spoilers so there's just a lot going on and um the world building is insane as well so like this book hits all the boxes like checks them all off um so definitely go ahead and read that so I did 
want to talk about Rhythm of War. So chapters one through six of Rhythm of War are out right now. I'm going to be planning on discussing those for the rest of this video. So if you haven't read Stormlight Archive or the first six chapters of Rhythm of War, um, click away. There will be spoilers. I'm warning you now. Please don't watch. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Don't want any spoilers, so please click away. I figured I would just do some like really quick thoughts on what's going on. I'm not gonna dial too much into like the Cosmere and finding all of the Easter eggs and predictions and stuff and it's mostly just gonna be like what I thought of the first six chapters. So First chapter with Navani. Oh, my girl, you deserve so much better than Galvanar, like fuck Galvanar 2k20 because really he sucks so much. Wow, he is the literal worst. I love how as the series progresses and we learn more about Galvanar, we just learn that he's awful and we hate him. Like in the first book, you think of him as such like this honorable king and then just gets slowly and slowly worse. But anyways, fuck him, Navani, you deserve better. Also, I like really didn't like Navani in The Way of Kings and now I love her and I'm totally blaming Dalinir and his unreliable narrator um, miss of that because now that we know his whole backstory, everything Navani did makes so much sense. Like. In The Way of Kings, Dalinir mentions how she like played both of them and then ended up with Gabalar because he was the king and I was like, actually, I mean like, I guess, but also she didn't really have good options. <laughs> at least one was the king. Like y'all both were criminals, but at least one of you is the king. So anyways, I love Dalinir and Navani so much and I like how much they've grown to be an actual healthy beautiful couple, um, but I do not blame Navani for what happened in the past and I'm glad that she's moved on from her abusive ass ex-husband that we hate. Is it an ex if he's dead? Well, other thoughts on characters, we got a uh, Lurin perspective who is Kaladin's father and I know lots of people are mad at him right now because he's being mean to his son which I feel but I also I really love Lurin as a character because he's him and Kaladin are the same they both care so much about people um so 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 much I see so much of Lurin in Kaladin so I still love him um I and I completely understand his viewpoint on everything that's going on because he is a surgeon and he believes to save and protect people you have to heal them versus Kaladin um believes in protecting people through fighting and it's a, just a fundamental difference of values and like I feel for Liren because I'm a nonviolent person so I definitely scooch more toward his side of things but also Lyran just like love your son because he's going through it and he needs your love and support and so I understand where you're coming from but also just treat your son better because he's the best he's such a good man okay <sighs> anyways other thoughts Collagen and Lynn dating off screen is an attack on me personally, Brandon Sanderson. Like, that's not okay. In general, I'm not like the biggest fan of time skips um, because I like to know what happens in the story. When you're skipping an entire year right after like such a big climax, I want to know what's happened. Um, and so I'm just a little bit salty because there's there was a lot that happened within that year um and I know we're gonna learn about it but like I want to know everything I guess it wouldn't be super interesting uh plot wise to just read about Kaladin's dating life but you know that's what I want also within that year gap we 
don't know how Shalyn and Adeline's marriage life is going and I want to know that as well. We, we know that my girl Shalyn has, uh, still has her multiple personalities and where they have seemed to blend more seamlessly, like they're not in constant argument with each other right now, but instead are working really, really well together. Um, but she's still going through it on that end. Um, and while I find this really, really interesting, I also just miss like just Shalyn's perspective because right now it's just Shalyn Radiant Veil vale constantly and not just, not just Shalyn. Um, and I love her, but I did really, really, really love that Shalyn, or I guess Veil, vale, was like, I'm gonna just kill Eli Sadie's because what a power couple if Adeline and Shalyn just wipe out the entire Sadie's family. I stand two assassin bays. Overall, though, the chapters that we got are really, really interesting and I'm excited to see where it goes. But the main thing that I'm just like looking forward to and it hasn't come yet is like, what is going on with the Purcelli? Because at the end of Oathbringer, we got that huge, like, bam, uh, relevation that, you know, the Parsh Parshadi were the original occupants of this world, and then the humans uh, brought Odium and, you know, killed them all and enslaved everyone, and they're the actual Voidbringers. Um, and that was, for me, a very big relevation, and Certainly it was the reason why, you know, the original Radiance broke their oath. And I know I didn't expect, you know, any of our main characters to break their oaths because of it. But I do want to know, like, how they reacted to that relevation. And since we've jumped ahead a year, like, we know that they've had time to think about it and sit down. But we haven't learned any of their thoughts on it. We've seen throughout the battle sequences that have happened so far in Rhythm of War that Collagen really respects the Heavenly Ones and they fight using such honor and I think that ties in back with, you know, they were the original sons and daughters of honor. That is super, super interesting um, and I really didn't think I would like Leoshi based off of last book but now I really like her and want to know more about the Heavenly Ones and the Fuse and we haven't gotten like Raylan has been mysteriously absent um is he the Windrunner that that one Spurn is holding out for like give me more I just want to know more about the Parchment um and we haven't gotten a single Aishonai or Venly flashback or point of view even though this is their book like where are they so that's really what I'm just like waiting on um now that I know all of my bays Shalin and Kaladin and Dalinir are like safe and alive and doing well well their mental state might not be doing like super great but they're you know safe and alive <laughs> loved you know these last six chapters they've been great I just like, I want it all right now. Like, I want to know what happened after the Dawn chant was translated and how everyone in the world reacted. Are there humans fighting on the other side or are they all still on their separate sides? Really looking forward to more chapters. Um, and if you guys have been reading and want to discuss anything that uh, went down in the books, uh, feel free to comment below because I would love to you know, squeal about Rhythm of War with more people. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, I think I'm gonna just randomly post my Rhythm of War thoughts every once in a while. So thanks all. Bye.